Now let's continue discussing some of the shared features of these two species. Notice that we've shown another Oompa Loompa guy towards the back, as well as another tray of chocolate. The chocolate candy and chocolate factory should help you remember that Neisseria grows on chocolate agar. This is an image of chocolate agar. As you can see, it has a distinct brown appearance and looks kind of like chocolate. Chocolate agar is simply heated blood agar, which contains lysed red blood cells. Some of the components in blood agar prevent the growth of Neisseria. However, if blood agar is heated to become chocolate agar, then these components become inactive, which allows Neisseria to grow. Going back to the image, we can see that as the same Oompa Loompa opens his mouth to eat the chocolate, his big prominent lips stick out. Lips sounds like lipooligosaccharide, so the taste testing Oompa Loompa with big lips should help you remember that Neisseria contains lipooligosaccharides present in the outer membrane of the cell wall. Lipooligosaccharides act as strong endotoxins that cause sepsis and shock. This is an image of the bacterial cell wall of gram-negative organisms. You can see that we've zoomed up on this part of the cell wall right here. This is the inner membrane, and this is the outer membrane. This image shows lipooligosaccharides embedded in the outer membrane. However, the concept is the same except that Neisseria contains lipooligosaccharides. So the lipooligosaccharide of Neisseria would look kind of like these structures on the outer membrane of the cell wall. Okay, moving on, notice that we've shown the chocolate in packages towards the front of the image. As you can see, the packages are of various shapes and sizes. This, in conjunction with a large prominent pili over Wonka's head, should help you remember that the pili of Neisseria display antigenic variation. So, pillars for pili and packages of various shapes and sizes for antigenic variation. Antigenic variation just means that the pili are structurally altered through frequent genetic variation. Antigenic variation of pili occurs in both Neisseria meningitidis and Neisseria gonorrhea. Therefore, vaccines against this target are limited and have been ineffective. This is partly why the scientific community has yet to develop a good vaccine for Neisseria gonorrhea. However, other targets have been developed for Neisseria meningitidis, so there is an effective vaccine against this species. We'll talk more about this in the next two videos. For now, just recognize that both species display antigenic variation of pili, and also know that pili play an important role in bacterial movement, as well as attachment to host cells. In order to make these chocolate packages look extra special, we've shown an Oompa Loompa guy cutting some ribbons and decorating the packages. The scissors in his hand are here to help you remember that another virulence factor of Neisseria is IgA protease. We've used this symbol in prior videos, but recall that proteases are enzymes that cleave proteins, just like scissors cleave paper. This is an important virulence factor for Neisseria because it facilitates the survival of the organism within host cells. Now we've added another Oompa Loompa guy who's gluing the ribbons onto the packages. Glue sounds like glucose, so this should help you remember that both Neisseria meningitidis and Neisseria gonorrhea ferment 